Louisiana Beer Review Special Edition Harp Lager Revisited. This beer was introduced in 1960. It is 5% alcohol. It was introduced and is still owned by Guinness, Diageo and Guinness now. It's set in this, this is a 12 ounce bottle, thankfully. It says, Genuine Irish Recipe. Now as soon as I saw that, that was a tip off. It didn't say Genuine Irish Beer, it said Recipe. That's a tip off that is not made in Ireland. So, I looked at the bottle and it says, Guinness Brewing Company, St. John, New Brunswick, Canada. So it's a Canadian version of the Harp Lager, and that is very common for Guinness to brew in New Brunswick, Canada. Um, I bought this at uh, I bought this at Martin Wine Cellar, and I think it was one dollar twenty nine cents for the bottle. Okay. Five percent alcohol. <clears throat> that is the same as Budweiser. Now they have redesigned. Right after I bought this bottle, they introduced a redesigned blue and silver bo uh, bottling can. Although I think I prefer the green, the shades of green, darker to lighter at the top. And I remember back in the '90s, it was a different design. Also, so they've changed it over the years. They always have a harp on it. Uh. They use golden barley in the recipe, and this beer was developed by Dr. Erman Munder, a German brewmaster. It's an okay score on advocate. The bros say it's good. 22 out of 100 on rate beer, no surprise there, they don't like lagers. 52 out of 100 for the style. So, if you want to try a lager beer and you check rate beer, it's almost for sure going to say it's bad. Unless it's a uh, ultra premium Doppelbach like Iinger Celebrator, but usually they say yuck, yuck, it's no good. But you gotta try it for yourself. Now it's a medium, thin to medium white head and a mostly clear golden appearance with some bubble streams. Now this is golden, it's not the yellow fizzy stuff as people will remark. It's uh, sweet, pungent. Uh, I was filming out, getting ready to film out there, and then the rain started. So I said, I'm going to get rained on. Let me come under this porch, screen in porch. Uh, it's not a real strong aroma, but certainly there's nothing bad about it. It uh, smells like beer. Let's go with the flavor. see any best buy date. Just see some crazy code. Okay, so it's made with water, golden barley, malt, and hops. And you're getting some biscuity, light biscuity, very lightly roasted barley malt. A little bit of lemoniness and grassy hops for sure. There is a distinct hop bitterness at the end of, this, of the sip, but I'm thinking the IBUs must be no more than around 16. I wouldn't think they'd be too hot. Beautiful lacing. So it's just a pleasant, bready, barley malt flavor. It's not too strong at all. Um, does seem to have a little bit of a maize or corn undertaste, but I thought it was made without that adjunct. Um, it sort of reminds me of Dos Equis, which was invented 60, well, the Dos Equis Lager Especial, actually. The Dos Equis Especial came out in 1984, 24 years after this, but it kind of reminds me of that. 
and those kind of beers or these kind of beers go so well with spicy foods and I'm a big spicy food person so consequently I guess I'm a big lager person right so uh, what I wanted to say was the mouthfeel is not very watery or light it's more like a medium mouthfeel which is a little unusual for lagers because usually you get that very light crisp mouthfeel but this one is more substantial it certainly has more of a presence um, well, and that's different from the Dos Equis because the Dos Equis Especial, the green bottle or green can, it has a very light body, watery body, you could see. The finish here is pretty crisp, it's pretty refreshing, <laughs> and it's very easy going. So if you're a person who's basically just been drinking light beers like Bud Light or Coors Light or Miller Light or um, Highlandman's Old Style Light or Blatt's Light, stuff like that, and you want to try to get into heavier bodied beers, and but you're like afraid of the dark beers because a lot of people have a, a kind of a misunderstanding of those, but you want something with a little more heft to it, this might be a good one to try. Although you probably might want to gravitate toward this. This might be a little too heavy for somebody who just drinks light beer. Um, you might want to go to Dos Equis Especial or um, Soul, which is even lighter bodied, or jump up to regular Blatt's or regular Coors or regular Budweiser or regular Miller, you know, Miller High Life or Miller Genuine Draft, and then jump up to this because this is a little more uh, of a, a, it'll have a little more um, richness to it. Well certainly it's a delicious beer and it has all positives and really I cannot think of any negatives. If there are negatives associated with this uh, I'd like to know what they are because um, I don't see it. <laughs> maybe, and I mean maybe, and that's just me because I've drank too many already today here trying to do these reviews. It maybe it has a paperiness but I don't think so but if it does it's only a shade of paperiness I will give this a B plus it's a solid very good beer you could even say excellent A minus and get up into the A but I'll be conservative and say B plus and that's a darn good rating and the beer is not expensive so if you haven't tried it I strongly recommend checking it out Les Les Bon Temps Roule, a very delicious beer from an exceptional company, Guinness Diageo. <coughs> Diageo Guinness, actually. And I'm going to end this review by saying, you all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.